Now you probably all feel your heart beating. If you can't, you can just take two fingers here, put them on your neck, and you do it rightly, you can feel the artery right here. And every pulse you feel here is one of your heartbeats. So our heart beats all through our life. Um, our heart beats normally somewhere around 60 to 70 beats per minute if we're not doing anything. But if we get active, it will beat a lot faster. It is not the same for all mammals. Some mammals have very high pulse, other mammals have a slow pulse. Um, it is not a controlled act activity, the um, speed of which the heart beats. It's not like I can decide, okay, now I want my heart to beat faster and then it can increase. That's not how it works. There are, of course, some methods of relaxation where you can lower your heart rate, but it's not something you decide like voluntary. In general, when I start exercising, if I start doing stuff, my heart rate will increase. Right now, I have this pulse sensor on here. I have a heart rate of 80, but if I start doing exercise, don't worry, I won't make a aerobic class here, my heart rate will go up. If I start relaxing, just sitting down, doing nothing, my heart rate will go down. The rate of which my heart beats per minute, the BPM is controlled by a patch in the right atrium, which is called the pacemaker. These are a group of cells that then sends a nerve signal to the rest of the heart, and that nerve signal causes the heart muscle to contract. Now, how does the body know when the heart needs to beat faster? Um, and you might think it's because we need more oxygen, and that is true. But what the body actually senses is the amount of CO2. As I start exercising, my body will burn more carbohydrates and this will release more CO2 into the blood. Now, in the blood, CO2 works as a weak acid. As we've got more weak acid in the blood, it will lower the pH of the blood. And this is a signal to the pacemaker and to the system that now our heart needs to beat faster. I also need to breathe faster. Um, if we have a damage to the heart muscle, we can get an artificial pacemaker, which is a machine that sends the electric signals to the heart and makes sure it keeps beating in the right pattern, even if we have damage to the heart muscle. The role of the heart is to circulate blood around the body. So it might come as a surprise that the heart actually needs its own blood supply, but it does. Because the heart is a hard working muscle, so it needs a, a supply of blood all around the working tissue. And for that, we have the coronary arteries. And their role is to supply oxygenated blood all around this muscle who keeps contracting hard your entire life. Now, a healthy artery here have these strong and smooth walls, uh, but, and which means it's easy for blood to come through. But if we damage the inside of our arteries, especially the coronary arteries, what can happen is these small damages here, eventually there'll come layers of uh, material here that can block the blood flow. Uh, this in itself can lead to less blood flow to the heart, which will reduce the efficiency of the heart. It also means there's a bigger risk that if we have a blood cloth, that here wouldn't block anything, but here it might block the blood flow through the artery. And if that happens, we get coronary heart disease and it is one of the things that kills a lot of people here in the Western world. We don't take that good care of our hearts and that ends up killing a lot of people. Be aware that what I'm covering now is just the syllabus and little extra stuff. None of this is medical advice. I'm not a doctor, okay? Just a science teacher. 
but we do know there are some risk factors for getting heart disease. Smoking is a bad idea. We know in general that smoking is a very efficient way of causing heart diseases. Um, diet is a little more controversial. Uh, the syllabus say that too much salt and saturated fat can cause heart disease. And that is also, if you talk to some doctors, what they say. Other scientists today are a little less sure if this is true for everybody. It might be that some people are very sensitive to dietary changes and others are not. But just be aware that the syllabus will say reduce salt and saturated fats, but be aware that the science behind it is a little more complicated. Obesity, being overweight, is not good for your system. It puts a lot of stress on the heart. Being stressed is not good for your system. You can actually end up working yourself, stressing yourself to death, getting a heart attack from that. Genetics matter a whole lot. We all heard those stories about, you know, my grandfather smoked and ate everything and he lived until he was 100. And that could be true. Some people just have genetics that makes it very hard for them to get heart disease, others don't. Lack of exercise, just sitting still, is not good for the heart. And if you have high blood pressure or diabetes, both of them will increase your risk of getting a heart disease. Which leads to prevention. How do you avoid getting problems with your heart? How do you keep a healthy circulatory system for life? Again, be aware, I'm not a doctor. This is just general advice from the syllabus. If you smoke, quit smoking. That's the, perhaps the most important factor at all. Watch the diet. Getting more vegetables and less saturated fat will for most people probably be a good idea. Stay active. You don't have to be a triathlon runner. You don't have to be like going to the CrossFit gym every day, although it would be awesome, but stay active. Do some kind of exercise. Sleep and reduce stress is important. Get enough sleep. Try to avoid excess stress. If you have high blood pressure or diabetes, get the correct treatment. And the boring truth is that pretty much the advice you can get from your mother, get some good sleep, get some good diet and get some exercise is probably what is going to matter the most. And if you are sick, go to the doctor and get the right treatment. So as I said, here in the Western world, we tend to have a high rate of coronary heart disease. Luckily for us, we also now have medical options to help us treat them that are way better than they were 50 or 100 years ago. Again, the best prevention is of course not getting coronary heart disease, but if you have those problems and your coronary arteries start getting blocked, there are different medical procedures that can help. There are some types of medicine that can be used. If you have high blood pressure, statins can be used. If your blood is too thick, you can get blood thinning uh, medicine. So there are some different kinds of medicine that can, that can be used to try to keep the heart running, even if you have some damage to the arteries. Uh, of course, also, if caught the right time, lifestyle changes can help. Getting more exercise, better sleep, better diet and so on, quit smoking, and that might help prevent the damage from getting worse. But if we have damage to the coronary arteries, there are some different medical procedures that can be used. One of them is if you have a very damaged section, you can take a new piece of artery and put in and bypass the damaged part. So you actually go in and put on a extra blood vessel there so the blood don't have to run to the damaged part and it can run around the damaged part. That's called a bypass operation. And you might heard about people getting a double or triple bypass. That is how many places you bypass the damaged part. Uh, you can also put in what's called a stent. 
where you put in a mesh that keeps the damaged part open. You can also put in a balloon that is pushed into the damaged part and then you inflate the balloon, it kind of pushes it open. It's called angioplasticity and it can then keep or help open up a damaged part of the artery. Now all of this is fine, but if you have a bad stroke and get damaged to the heart muscle, that part can get damaged permanently. The heart muscle, if it gets damaged enough, it can't repair itself the way that our other muscles can. So if we have severe damage to the heart muscle, the only alternative can, can end up being a heart transplant, which means getting a heart from another human. Um, and of course, if you get a well-functioning heart, that can extend both your life and your quality of life a lot. The problem about getting transplant is that your own immune system might fight it. So you have to be on medication that suppress your own immune system for the rest of your life. But still, for some people, this can mean the difference between, you know, dying or having a very bad life or having an active life again. Again, none of this medical advice. Just remember, all of this here is repairing damage. The best course is not to get your heart damaged in the beginning. So quit smoking, get some exercise, watch your diet and stay healthy is a better choice than surgery.